Hi, I'm Carly from Family Tree Notebooks, and today I wanted to give you an overview of how my worksheet system works for genealogy. The basic idea is that you give each of your ancestors that you're tracking, you give them a chapter in an index, and inside that chapter, you put all of the photos and notes and records that you want to keep for that ancestor. It's really a very simple system. The idea is that we have all of these papers and photos, things laying around in boxes, and it can be difficult sometimes to track where you have what for which person. The other problem is that for those of us that are relying on software and online programs, those programs are fantastic at organizing the genealogy. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use them, but they can be hard to translate for if you're leaving that information to somebody. It can be hard to explain to people what they're looking at. It doesn't always do a good job of turning the information into a story or at least something tangible that people can pick up and immediately understand. And that's why I like to have this notebook that I think of as something that's complementary to the services that I pay for, to the other ways that I have of record keeping. In all of the genealogy work that I've done, I found that the notebook is the easiest way to give that information to somebody and to have them understand what they're looking at immediately. So I also think that it's a really good thing to use if you're at the beginning points of genealogy. One of the arguments that I've heard is that, oh, I've been doing this for years. I now have so much genealogy that it's impossible for me to put it into a notebook. I think that the problem that we run into there though is that if you have so much work that you've done and it's filed in a certain way, you wanna make sure that those files are going to make sense to the people who receive those files after you're gone. If you don't have them organized in a way that those files are going to make sense, we run the risk that all of that hard work is going to be lost simply because it's going to overwhelm somebody who's not used to looking at genealogy and who has an interest in family history, but maybe not to the same depth as somebody who's been doing it for 20 or 30 years. My notebooks are run on an index system where everybody gets an index number and then that index number is their chapter. The index is based off of direct biological relatives and it's based off of a root person. So you take one person, this little imaginary person on top, and then the index is pre-printed so that it tracks these generations, these top ones right here, which is a good amount of ancestors. You don't have to be the root person, depending on how you wanna organize your notebooks. Personally, I use my parents as the root person so that each of my parents has their own notebook. You can also start a new notebook for somebody in this generation and then repeat using this person as the root person and keep going on so that you don't have to have notebooks where you have spaces for all these ancestors if possibly you don't know who those ancestors are. So this is not, okay, this is today and this is how your ancestry has to be organized inside your notebook. This just gives you a starting person. We call this person the root person. Okay, so here in the pre-printed index, you can see that the root person is on the top and then there's spaces in the index for you to write down all of the known relatives. There's little guides in the index that tell you that number four is the parent of number two. So this is going to be the root person's mother's parents. And all of these relationships down here, that's their relationship to the root person. So it tells you that they are the parent of somebody else, but it also keeps bringing it back to the root person so that as you're looking in the index and you're trying to remember which generation people are, it's easy to track. So you go through, you fill in the ancestors' names that you know, and then you'll see that gives them a number. So your paternal grandfather is always going to be number seven, or not yours, the root person's paternal grandfather is always going to be number seven. This is a sample that I've done. There are other worksheets that I use just to make things more visual. Again, I like to think of it as though I'm building a book that I'm intending to leave to someone. Sometimes I put notes in here, often I put notes in here that are just for me and my research, but most of the time if I'm making a page that I want to keep, I try to make it as visually appealing and also as clear as possible so that again, somebody can pick this up, open to this page and know exactly what and who they're looking at. For each of the ancestor chapters, you can start with whatever page feels good to you. Personally, I start with the ancestor profile because it's a nice way to organize the information. It has places for pictures and then it has the basic information about that ancestor. Incidentally, this is one of the pages that you get for free if you sign up for my email list on familytreenotebooks.com. You get the ancestor profile page, you get the first page of that index that I showed you, and I believe you get the death records page. I'd have to go back and look. But if you're interested in start setting up a notebook like this, but you don't have the money at the time to invest in a book, you can get these free pages and start making a skeleton book right away. Now my pages, most people buy the deluxe bundles. I have a 200 page United States deluxe bundle and a 200 page international bundle. They're $29 each and they should give you all of the pages that you need to make a nice fat notebook. 
but again with everything going on I completely understand if you don't have that right now you can use the free ancestor profile sheet to get your notebook started today and you can use this as a chapter header and then go ahead and just put your own notes behind it you can put your own records in this chapter I can't remember this is here's a map of this is where they were living um, here's a photo family tree I mean this shows you some of the the things the reason that i do like the notebook pages that i've created is that i like that everything matches and everything's very clear i also feel like some of the pages force you to slow down and process the information as you're transcribing it this is census information from 1910 that i've transcribed and i'm not sure that i would have looked as closely at the census census information if i hadn't taken the time to fill in the worksheet so I do suggest that you use the worksheets if that's a possibility for you, just because I feel like it really clarifies what you're looking at. The pages that I showed you before were samples that I've made for ads marketing purposes. This is actually one of my family notebooks. So you can see that I have tabs here that have the names of the ancestors. These tabs start their ancestor chapter. So we're looking at Edith Strange's ancestor chapter right now. I have her page tabbed. And then if we were to go on and open her chapter, we're going to see the different pages that I've compiled for her. So this is this is really, you know, this is how I'm using the pages um, in action. And often you're going to have relatives that you don't have a lot for, just like anything else. But then some relatives, I just have so much of these little clippings and little things, and it's great to have them organized. I also like to arrange them chronologically inside the chapter so that it does tell a story. One of my favorite things about having a notebook like this, that's you know, a continuous work in progress as I'm researching, is that if I do find something that I realize is connected to somebody, if Ancestry comes up with a new record hint for me, if I have a cousin who suddenly gives me something new, I know exactly where to put that. I can find that Ancestor chapter or the different ancestors that that new record or new photo is related to, put it right into their chapters. I do duplicate i will put this if the census has three different ancestors on it i will put that census in all three of their chapters because each person has a little chapter life story and that touched that and it's just fantastic to be able to know exactly where that's going to go to put it away and then if i don't have a lot of time to follow that rabbit hole that day i know that that record is going to sit exactly where it's supposed to be until i have a time when i can take a closer look at that and i really love that about this system just to take a closer look at some of the pages. So when you buy the digital worksheets, they are going to look like this. I have deluxe bundles in different colors. You can also buy individual worksheets, but most people buy the bundles because it's a better deal. This is the sand color. You see it has this colored bar. It tells you what this page is for, and then it gives you space to put in a photo and the information. I do have a low ink bundle now available, which doesn't have this colored bar if you're looking to save money on ink. Here's an example of the page when it's filled out. I use GoodNotes to add photos and text to my pages. You can also use Adobe products. You can use, there's different things that you can use. You basically just need something that's going to add text and photos to a PDF because the files come to you as standard PDFs. I have a Facebook group called Family Tree Notebooks Genealogy and people are great in there about helping people find programs and learn programs to use. Um, this is another page. Same format, but you see this is different information. I wanted to keep a lot of the formats as close as possible because it makes it for it makes a very consistent story for people who are reading through your notebook. You have a different format here. This is a nice blank one for the estate inventory. And again, you could just as easily use lined paper or blank paper. I just like the locked in, more professional look that having the worksheets gives you. Here's another copy of that index that we've seen. The index, this is page two, so you can see the, the index numbers and relationships are continuing. The index is really my favorite part of the system because it's what the whole system hinges on. And then I also have a lot of these fun pages. Now, when you get a 200 page deluxe bundle, you're not gonna need all 200 pages. Nobody needs all 200 pages. So I like to think of it as having about 30 core pages that you're going to use over and over again, which is why the bundle is priced $29 but then I have 170 fun pages that you might need. Things like passport applications, naturalization, um, passenger lists, and then other pages like this. This is just a page to show photos and to compare information across generations. And do you desperately need this in all of your genealogy research? Well, no, probably not, but for a descendant who's inheriting your research 
or somebody who you're gifting your research to for the holidays or just to share that part of your family with them. This is a really fun, visual, and easy way to understand the stories of people as time goes on and how similar our life stories actually are um, across generations. So there are a lot of pages like that. Again, the system is designed to be very simple and very user-friendly, both for the person who's putting the notebook together and for the person who's receiving the notebook and reading it. So don't be overwhelmed. I think that the biggest hurdle is figuring out how to add photos and text to the PDF pages if you want to do them on the computer. You could also just print these worksheets out and fill them in by hand. I mean, nobody says that you can't. If you purchase the worksheet and print it out immediately, it's going to look just like this, assuming you have a color printer. So don't feel like there's a hurdle here. I really believe that anybody can use the system to organize their genealogy and to create something that gets their genealogy off of the computer and turns it into something that they can pass on and share or just enjoy for themselves and be able to look at your family story as this long narrative that you've taken the time to build. I think that that's really special and I hope you enjoy using the pages.